quantity to give me back the degree of the polynomial in the case when my function is a homogeneous polynomial. If I do it like that, this will be the radius of the twice ball to the power k. This will be the radius of the ball to the power k. The ratio is 2 to the power k. So if I want to get the degree, I should take the, the log, or log base 2 if you want. It's not so important for us. So when u is pn, homogeneous polynomial of degree n, you will see that this, yeah, and I'll try to, to write this letter. So it's not the same n, but I mean, more beautiful one of the ball is n log 2 in my notation. <coughs> Using the equivalence of norm, we can see that this doubling index that is bound to it from above. There is a similar ex estimate from below. The maximum of 2b can be bounded by L2 norm over 4b. So this is, to do it more carefully, 1 over b, 4b. And the maximum there is larger than the average. How did you get the quality? I'm using the local boundness estimate or equivalence of norm. I know that the supremum of a ball of a solution of elliptic equation is bounded by a constant times L2 norm of a larger ball. So if there is a, some constant missing, but we'll add it when we take the logarithms here. And if you look at, at this ratio, this is my age at 4b to the power 1 half divided by h at 1 to the power 1 half. And you can Taking the logarithm, you can see that this is bounded by C1, our old function n that was a frequency of 4r plus constant C2, where r is the radius of the ball. And in a similar way, you can bound it from below and see that this doubling index is comparable to the frequency that we defined before if you allow some change of scale Instead of the ball, you take four times this ball, and you go to estimate from above, and I also add the constant there. But if one of those is large, another is large. If doubling is large, the frequency is large, and vice versa. So we'll prefer to work with the doubling index And now I can formulate the claim that is 
one of the main results for today. Say we are on a compact manifold. We say that there is a constant depending on M such that for any eigenfunction, and any relatively small ball, the frequency of this eigenfunction, or doubling index, sorry, of the eigenfunction related to this ball is bounded by constant times square root of lambda. tells us immediately that we can control the vanishing order of eigenfunctions. The eigenfunction with eigenvalue lambda vanishes not to, to the order not larger than square root of lambda. If you compare it to the result that we had yesterday, when we look at the nodal lines, we know that they're not too dense. So, so no, we know that they're relatively dense, that the, there is no ball of radius comparable to one over square root of lambda. This is a very different thing. It tells you that in the sense there are not too many nodal lines, at least at one point. You don't have intersection of too many nodal lines. The, if you think about two-dimensional picture, the order of vanishing is exactly how many nodal lines you have through one point. So now we have estimate from above on this picture. And to prove it, we will use the lifting and general version of three spheres. So first of all, go from function phi to function h. And let us compare the doubling indices for H and phi. So I will start with a ball B in the manifold and take lift of my function, leave the manifold, multiply it, say, by interval minus 1, 1, and look at the corresponding ball here. So B prime is a ball with the same center as B, the same radius, but in one more dimension. Then this is the log of the max over 2 prime of H over max of prime of H. And I want to estimate the doubling index for eigenfunctions from that one. So I will want to have an estimate from below. The maximum over this ball is larger than the maximum over B pro B phi pi lambda. What about this one? I take values from here and then I multiply them by something and do it. So the maximum is less than or equal to the maximum over b of phi lambda multiplied by e to the power of square root of lambda times r, where r is the radius of my ball. I go in this direction. 
Yes, thank you, you have to be here. And then I'll get that this is the doubling of function phi lambda for the ball B minus square root of lambda times R. So the doubling index for the eigenfunction is bounded by the doubling index of its lift of the lifted ball plus term of order square root of lambda. My r will be bounded, so this will be of constant time square root of lambda. So to prove the estimate, I need to bound the doubling index of the lifted function. And here we'll use the fact that this is almost monotone. And from ball B prime, that was a ball here, that was probably very small, I can go to a larger one with a fixed radius. And I know that this is bounded by constant times logical. All my R's are bounded, so the exponential term is bounded by a constant here. So we need to estimate the doubling index for a ball on a fixed scale, and to do it, I want to use the three sphere theorem in this form that is still valid for solutions of elliptic PDs. So I will normalize my eigenfunction in a way that the maximum over the manifold of phi lambda is equal to one, just multiplied by a constant, and think about omega as my manifold times minus one, one. B is my ball of fixed radius, and K will be the part inside. It's a compact subset there. Then three sphere theorem for this lifting function gives you that the maximum over this part, that it's exactly the maximum of the phi times the exponential, it will be one times e to square root of lambda divided by two, is bounded by constant maximum of h over this ball to some power times maximum of the whole manifold that is one times the same exponential but without half here, e to the square root of lambda, one minus gamma. And it tells you that the maximum of the ball is at least constant, e to minus square root of lambda times some constant q. The global maximum is equal to one. The maximum over this ball is at most this one. It means that the doubling of function h over the ball b two primes is bounded by log of one over this one. That is, of this form. 
So I didn't try this additional constant here, but we know that eigenvalues are positive, so it doesn't, that doesn't matter there. So from the lifting and three sphere theorem, we see that there is a universal bound on the doubling index for eigenfunctions and universal bound for the vanishing order of eigenfunctions. And I think this is all I have time to tell you. Today we will go back to the doublings on the next lecture and see how it works for the result that we want to, to prove. Quantitative unique continuation when you replace this ball by a set of positive measure. Thank you very much for, for your attention today.